Good afternoon. Uh, for today's presentation, I'm going to talk about what is the most preferred uh, assessment strategy for teachers and pupils. So we're going to talk about teacher, self and peer assessment today. So within my degree course in John Murray University, we were asked to do an action research uh, while on placement. So the school that I used for this was Cardinal Heenan High School, uh, and this took place between September and December 2012, while on my phase three placement. So why I chose to do this was because, as Offset states, assessment is constantly the weakest part of teaching and learning. It involves obtaining and inter interpreting information about pupils' skills, knowledge, and understanding of their learning needs. So with this here, I, I devised two research ob objectives. So the first research objective was, what is the most preferred assessment strategy for teachers and pupils? And the second one we talked about is, how accurate and reliable are peer and self-assessment strategies within PE lessons? The results of this here came through questionnaires, through pupil and teacher, and then at the end, the com comparison of the pupil and teacher results. This is just a little bit of background information, uh, li literature material on uh, teacher assessment. Teacher assessment involves teachers making judgment, judgments on pupils' performance levels or grades they are working at. It also assesses pupils throughout either assessment of learning or assessment for learning. So self-assessment as well. This allows pupils to be involved in identifying gaps in their learning and steps to simplify this. It also encourages independent learners and indif individual reflection about what constitutes uh, good work. So again, within Ofsted, they look to see independent learners throughout the lesson as well. Peer assessment. Peer assessment involves pupils assessing their performance of their peers. The advantages of this as well, it can improve motivation of pupils to work harder. It also develops high level thinking through ownership of the assessment process. So again, this time they, have, they get to vision and they can peer assess within, with their peers. So the methodology behind this. So the aim of this action research was to assess the accuracy and reliability of peer and self-assessment strategies within the PE lesson and to discover pupils and teachers' preferred assessment strategies. So the rationale. We hope to discover what assessment strategy is the most effective and why, so it can be used more out uh, through MPE lessons within Cardinal Heenan. So the ethical considerations. You should always allow your research proposal to be scrutinized by any ethics committee and accept their decision. Within the sampling, it was very convenient because I was on placement in the school, I could select a year group as we picked here was the year sevens, and I chose 12 pupils within this and a box of unit of work, which they had never looked at before. This took place within the sports hall and the dance studio. The instruments used within this research were peer assessment worksheets, the school grading criteria, which is in handbooks, and also we had the privilege of just purchasing uh, three to four brand new iPads, which again were very good uh, within the lessons. Pupils and teachers also took part in questionnaires, and this data was collected through quantitative and qualitative to answer the research objectives. Just moving on again with, all, with the methodology. This took part over a unit of work for boxing was planned and deliver over six to eight lessons to develop pupils ability to peer and self-assess. Within the peer assessment part, this, they looked at the combination of punches, so the hook, the jab and the uppercut. And they also, at the end of the lesson, they would think and share in within the plenary. The self-assessment bit, while we're using the iPads, was on their stance and guard. So at the end of their six to eight lessons, they were all videoed, and they were able to look back and see how well they performed. Teachers' assessment of pupils, attainment and effort. All PE teachers and pupils completed a questionnaire, as I said previous, and the results were collected and collated to assess similarities, differences in teacher self and peer assessment of grades and levels. The D limitations. As I said, this only happened at, or took place in one school, so it was um, study focused on a secondary school and only researched a small population, so only 12 pupils took part in this research. Um, the 
data analysis again, as you'll see on the next slide. The qualitative uh, was the emerging themes, quotes and samples, answers um, that were asked to the quest asked to the pupils and the teachers. And the quantitative are, sh are shown through graphs and statistics within the next slide. So as you can see from diagram one here, this was on the reported that 77% of the pupils could correctly identify what effort level, so from one to five, uh, their self or their partner peer were working at. So when the pupils were working in pairs, they 77% of the pupils knew exactly what level they were working at uh, from one to five. The pie chart also ha highlighted nine or nine percent of the pupils estimated one effort level below, and 14% of the pupils. Um, assessed that they were working at a higher level. So again, 77% is still a very big for year seven. Um, within uh, figure number two, this is on the peer and self assessment predictions. So from this is evident that the peer assessment is more reliable with 77% again of the people's predicting their grades and only 14 and 9% uh, underestimating their performance. And finally, the teacher and pupils preferred assessment strategies. So this is the big one that we were looking at and we find our most information on. This showed pupils' responses relevant and even selection of using teacher, self and peer assessment, as you can see throughout. Okay, so it was kind of even kind of marked with 33% in each of them. Um, when talking to the teachers that uh, took part in this, uh, they preferred more teacher assessment as opposed to self or peer. I think because they would get the, a better overview of it and then they could see themselves what they were looking for. So we just going to concentrate within the questionnaire on the what was most preferred. So teacher again, prefer the assessment on judgment and my knowledge of the activity where that I am better than the student. So they get a lot more information. For example, they got the same boxing. Now, here again, it was useful when pupils are doing the same activity, and therefore can judge it better. Uh, another one for self. You can judge yourself good, well, even if you are bad. So you might have some, there's some good techniques in some of them, but you might be um, a little bit lower than the other ones. So, just moving on to the questionnaire. So, as you can see again, the questionnaire for each of the objective one. What's the grade down here? Um, when talking to the teachers, 100% were benefit from using self and peer assessment strategies. 87% of the teachers were confident in their knowledge of the peer grading criteria. It has a lot of the same, a lot of the grading criteria are all over the wall to the students in the common score section. You know exactly where they are going to work with each year. 100% of the teachers believe using various instruments uh, to better understand
strategies for him because I think the, the problem with lots of PE lessons is that there's a definite beginning to the lesson and an end point of the lesson. Now if we do a lot more assessment and there's a greater understanding of the skill or the concepts that, that make good sport or performance, the lesson, when we stop the lesson, their own development can continue away from the lesson which then we feed back into the next lesson. And by doing that, we should see a clear progression in sport performance. That's great. Thank you for that. Okay, you're very welcome.